Photorealism is really, really hard to achieve. But after researching for countless hours, practicing various techniques, and asking tips from artists who make renders that look like they are from the real world, I have gathered about four main techniques that I will not only explain to you, but also apply to a demo scene so that you can understand them better. I will also give away free assets later in the video, so stick to the end as they will definitely come in handy. Before starting the video, if you don't know what photorealism is, it is the art of creating 3D renders that mimic real life. And the reason you should learn photorealism in 3D is so that you can create stunning renders that will help you stand out. Now that you know what photorealism is, the first step to achieve it is by understanding how real life works. You have to understand how light behaves in certain conditions. And this is where references come in. Now I am not saying to just go take a photo and create something nearly identical to it in Blender. By reference, I mean to understand how light will work in certain conditions. Look at this example here. These are the references for the book render. These photos are separated into three different categories. Using reference was the most general tip I got from most of the artists and it really helps out a lot. Now to collect references, you can use real photos from your camera or you can search up online for references. I usually use Unsplash and I use a free software called Pure Ref to organize these references. Another small thing that you have to keep in mind is to make sure the object size matches to the real world one. There are a lot of ways to do this, but I use this human rig, which comes with the Rigify add-on, which is already in Blender. This helps me to scale objects carefully. And the reason this is so important is that if the object is very big, the lights and the depth of field will work differently and will break the feeling of realism. After you've collected your references, it's time to hunt down the assets. Now there are a few things you have to keep in mind before you go searching. Make sure the assets you find are scanned from real life. You can easily find these on Megascans and Sketchfab. You can even scan them by yourself with Reality Capture or any other software. You also have to make sure you use 4K or 8K PBR textures. This is necessary because all those little details come up in the final render. You can find detailed textures on Fab, Ambient CG and Polyhaven. The best place to get high quality models is Fab. Other than that, you can create your own by taking photos of real objects and use something like Reality Capture to turn it into a 3D model. A small tip, files for 3D printing are also very high quality as they have no limitations of the poly count. The only downfall is that these files don't have textures on them. However, you can use them in a scene like this. The goal is simply to add as many details as you can while following the references. Now for the demo scene, I have made this quick little setup. And as you can see that I have displaced the wood with the displace and subdivision modifier. I have also scattered these wooden chips and rocks to add more micro details. I have added these materials for free on my Patreon, so go and get it now. These micro details will be in the final render and will play their part. Not only that, but you can add dust and hair particles to make it more realistic. You can also get that for free on my Patreon it works by scattering small hair and dust particles with geometry nodes. I won't recommend you to model everything by yourself because that will take time and the outcome will not be guaranteed, but I also don't mean to just take others' work and use it for yourself. You can scan your surroundings with just your phone. If you still want to model anything, just make sure to bevel your mesh. Now that you have collected and scattered the assets, you have to set up your camera. To set up your camera, you have to again take help from the references. For this shot, the camera is facing downwards. The focal length is high, maybe 80 or 70. The depth of field is also very high in this shot. The easiest way to get the angle is by using this shortcut and the camera will go in the flying mode. Now the best option is to use this lens SIM add-on that simulates real life lenses in Blender. This add-on gives amazing results and I have also made a video on it. But if you want to use the default camera, go into the camera properties and change the focal length according to your references. For close-up shots, change the blades to 8 and ratio to 2. Just select the point where you want to focus and decrease the f-stops until you match it with your reference. A general tip if you are making an animation, you can add handheld animation to your camera with this free Blender add-on or you can do it manually. Select the camera and add keyframes for the rotation 
you can use the shortcut I for that. Open a new window and open the graph editor. Go over here and add the noise modifier. Change these values, then right click and select copy to selected. Let's talk about lighting. Now it is mostly a practical thing and every reference will have a different pattern. So I will just break down these two shots and tell you some general things that I learned along the way. So first is this book shot. It looks like the light is coming from a window and is mostly like sunlight. To do this in Blender, add an area light, press shift, plus right click and click on your subject that you want to light. Now if I change this option to 3D cursor, I can now rotate the light and it will always face towards the point. This comes in handy when you are experimenting with lighting. Now let's get back to what we were doing. I just have to follow the references and align the light. If you go into the properties and reduce this spread value, the light will get sharper. If you bring it to zero, it will behave like the light we saw in the reference. I am just going to make it a little softer. And in the end, I am going to increase the strength. And now it completely matches my reference. Let's move to the second shot. It's more complex than this, but I will explain everything to you. So for this shot, I couldn't find any proper references, so I was struggling with the lighting. This dark lighting looks great, but this is not how light works in real life. To solve this, I have used an HDRI with low strength. What this did was it acted as a fill light, which made the scene look more realistic. The best way to get HDRI is from Polyhaven. When you are downloading, make sure to download the EXR format. And if you are using it only for lighting, download the lowest quality one. And if the HDRI will come in your render, use the 4K version for the best results. Lighting is still very hard to recreate, so it will be great if you experiment with different setups and organize those lights in different collections so you can disable it any time. In the beginning of the video, I said there were four main things you have to understand, but there is one more extra thing you have to keep in mind. No matter how realistic your scenes look, if your render settings are bad, not will it only take more time to render, it will also give bad results. So more samples and a high quality resolution is necessary. I have made a video on how to decrease render times. You can watch that. For now, I will just tell you some settings you have to keep in mind. So first, keep the noise threshold to 0.075. Increase the samples to 1000. Change the resolution to 200%. The first step is to collect as much reference as you can. After that, collect all of the assets and set them up. Make sure to set up the PBR textures properly with displacement. You can use a displace modifier for that, or you can change the material settings to bump and displacement. Add micro details like wood chip, stones and hair. You can get these for free from my Patreon. After that, set up your camera and play with the depth of field settings. Then experiment with the lighting And in the end, render it out to see the results. I hope you liked this video. And if you want to support the channel, check out my cinematic compositor. It can turn your renders into a cinematic masterpiece.